In the world of cinema, there is one number that stands out above the rest, and that would be 35. 35 millimeter film has been the industry standard size since the beginning of the movie era, and most films shot pre-2013 were actually shot on big, bulky reels of 35 millimeter film. That is before digital giants like the Arri Alexa and the Reds came to prominence, and directors and DOPs realized that it would be cheaper, easier, and faster to shoot digitally rather than on film. There is, however, one major problem with 35mm film for people on a tight budget. Figured it out yet? Yep, it is so, so expensive. So how can people like me, who don't have millions to shoot a movie, shoot on traditional film? The answer is that 35mm isn't always the answer. There are other variants, and they are still very prominent. 16mm film, or Super 16, is used by many directors and many indie filmmakers because it does give a film a very vintage look, and a very organic look, without breaking the bank. But for people that are on a really tight budget, or are just feeling really nostalgic, there is my artsy go-to, which is 8mm, or Super 8. Super 8 film was invented back in the 1960s as a way for families to be the directors of their own home movies without breaking the bank. This was an enormous leap in technology back then because at this time there was no cheap and easy way to shoot movies at home. What you experienced was one off and you could never watch it again. That just sounds like torture to me. To make it even easier for everyone, the film came and still comes in pre-sealed cartridges so that you can load it into the camera without needing a dark room, so you don't have to worry about reloading film and it getting spoiled. Now, I feel lucky that I was actually taught to use a Super 8 camera from a very young age. My grandfather, Glanthi, actually taught me how to use his old Chinon 44 to film little home movies, and it was really fun, but after he passed away in 2010, I actually never touched a Super 8 camera again until last year. Last year, I was doing a foundation course in art and design, and I had the privilege of being able to choose what to do for my final project. So since I chose something to do with film, I wrote about the history of movies. And to do that, I would obviously need a film camera. My grandfather's old Chinon 44 wasn't working, so I decided to buy myself a new one. And here it is. This is a Canon 814 electronic zoom film camera. This was the bee's knees when it came out, and I still think this is one of the coolest film cameras you can buy. I mean, it just looks so retro. I think one of the coolest things about it, though, is if you listen to the sound, I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone. Is that not one of the coolest sounds ever? I mean, I love this thing. Anyway, I think now we should move on to the reasons why I really like film. Let's leave the history alone for a little bit. I think three of the main reasons why I love shooting on film so much would be the color, the grain, and especially that it isn't reusable. Now that might sound weird, but I'll go into that in a minute. If I see a video clip with digital noise in it like this one, I will probably discard the clip because I don't want to be using any kind of clip which isn't really, really nicely made. But when it comes to film, I actually don't mind the grain, probably because it makes the whole thing just look way more organic. It just gives it a more realistic feel. It's just, I don't know, it's something about it which I don't know, it makes, it makes the whole movie seem alive. Digital noise makes a camera look cheap, but film grain gives any film class. That's my view anyway. Now, I know there will be a few people that have different opinions to that, uh, and you can leave your opinions down in the comments section, but for me, and I think for most filmmakers who have experienced film, they'll probably give you the same answer. Now, as for the color, yes, when you originally scan Super 8 film, the color does look very washed out and sometimes even cheap. But I think that just gives the whole thing a nice warm quality to it. I don't know whether it just has something to do with the fact that I grew up shooting on Super 8 film with my granddad, but it just makes everything look much more warm and family friendly and just gives everything a more nostalgic feel. Now, as for the fact that film isn't reusable, that actually might sound to people as some kind of huge disadvantage, but I think there is one really good advantage to film not being reusable. When you shoot something digitally, it can feel disposable. I've shot films where it has taken us over, you know, 15, 20 takes to get something done really well. 
and that just wastes time on the shoot day. I think something about using film and the fact that it isn't reusable makes a director think and makes a DOP think about what they're about to film because once you film something, if it's not the way you want it, that's it. You can't just reuse the film, it's gone. And I just think that makes a movie better because it makes everything seem really well thought out. Now, of course, digital footage can be reworked and you can make digital footage look like Super 8 film and it can sometimes look really, really realistic. But I think that kind of thing would be best described as, imagine knocking over a Jenga tower. Knocking over that tower of blocks would be a really perfect way of making a mountain of sort of unique block positions. However, if you were to sort of position everything yourself, it would take you a lot longer to think of something unique. So I think the moral of that slightly confusing metaphor would be the fact that film is just something which is really difficult to replicate. So the short answer as to why I like Super 8 film so much would be the fact that it's imperfect. The long answer would be an entire lecture about my choices in filmmaking style, which would be way too long and nobody would watch. As you've probably seen on my channel a couple of months ago, I actually took a trip up to Edinburgh and when I did go up there, I just thought it would be a perfect idea to take up my Super 8 camera and film a bunch of things that I have never seen before so that I can experience them in two different ways. One shot on the A7S, which is a very nice, clear, crisp, perfect camera, and one shot on my Canon 814, which makes this noise. I really love doing that. I also took the camera down to Notting Hill in London a little bit because, I mean, who doesn't love Notting Hill, right? I did also send this film for processing, and the funny thing was they actually asked me whether I wanted it processed in 4K, which is pretty unbelievable when you consider how old this technology is that you can scan it in such high resolution. So obviously, I chose to do that. So without further ado, I present you vintage technology combined with viewing from a modern age. As you can see, there is something about Super 8 film which is really hard to put into words. Yes, it's imperfect. Yes, the colors washed out. Yes, it's really expensive. And yes, most people would probably rather watch everything in crisp, sharp 4K. Hell, I bought the A7S III so that I could shoot everything in beautifully clear 4K most of the time. But for that 1% of the time, when I do want something a little bit more organic, something that has a bit more personality, you can't really go wrong with a little bit of 1960s movie magic. 